A long time ago, in a galaxy not so far away, science fiction hit several new milestones in film. Take one step forward. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 science fiction movies of the 1970s. For this list, we're taking a look at the films that tackled science fiction from different perspectives and helped make the genre as popular as ever with mainstream audiences. Keep in mind, we're excluding superhero films from this list, so sorry Superman, you'll have to sit this one out. This is part of a series of videos spanning the decades of sci-fi flicks from the 1950s to the 2000s. That must be the look of... of being old. Number 10. Sleeper. What? Woody Allen made a science fiction film this early in his directing career? Who'd have thought it? Actually, Sleeper is really more of a sci-fi send-up than it is straightforward science fiction. Your brain will be electronically simplified. My brain? It's my second favorite organ. That's just what makes the film so refreshing, though, especially considering that sci-fi hadn't really been viewed under a comedic lens up until this point. You must understand that everyone you knew in the past has been dead nearly 200 years. But they all ate organic rice! Sleeper contains some of Alan's wittiest physical comedy, sharpest satire, and most consistently hilarious dialogue, poking fun at the past and present just as much as it does the future. Sex and death. Two things that come once in my lifetime. But at least after death, you're not nauseous. Number 9. The Andromeda Strain. Andromeda's perfect for existence in outer space. When an alien germ causes an entire town to drop dead, the government assembles a team of doctors to investigate. I assume it was inhaled. Not likely it's absorbed through the skin. That's what we'll find out now, the mechanism of death. A majority of the film takes place in an underground laboratory where our heroes study the specimen. It'll take us 16 hours to descend through the programmed decontamination procedures on the first four levels. If you're looking for an action-heavy sci-fi thriller, this one probably isn't for you. Ask your germ warfare friends. They have lots. There's more staring at computer screens and scientific jargon than there are chases or shootouts here. The computer's overloaded. Too much data coming in too fast. True enthusiasts of science, however, will appreciate the Andromeda strain for smartly observing its subject matter from a detailed, technical point of view. Next sector! There's no substation in this sector! Number 8. Silent Running That's right. This happens to be nature's greatest gift. Bruce Dern is an intergalactic hippie determined to protect Earth's last remaining gardens, which have been transported to a greenhouse in space. Until that day, may God bless these gardens. Is Silent Running overly preachy about protecting the environment? We humbly beg forgiveness. Without a doubt. And there were blue skies, and there was fresh air, and there were things growing all over the place, not just in some domed enclosures blasted some millions of miles out into space. To be fair, though, this was one of the first sci-fi films with a green theme, before every sci-fi film started shoving Mother Nature down our throats. And there were valleys, and there were plains of tall green grass that you could lie down in, that you could go to sleep in. Silent Running sincerely captures the beauty of nature and outer space. Now. This is the mulch. That's what makes a tree grow. At the same time, it also says something thought-provoking about the effects of isolation and the need for companionship. Wolf and Barker and Keenan. They weren't exactly my friends, but I did like them. Number 7. Solaris. Ну что ж, покажите нам вашу пленку. As far as science fiction films go, Solaris is among the most intimate ever made. The movie contains little action or large-scale production values, primarily setting itself in various rooms of the space station in which two characters have a conversation. 
но он умер. Дело не в этом. Умереть может каждый из нас. That by no means makes Solaris boring. Хорошо. If anything, it makes it fascinating with the sophistication of a stage play. Не надо, Хари. Я не Хари! The film isn't about throwing millions of dollars at the camera, but about examining the notions of humanity and loss. Ну вот я тебя люблю. Но любовь это чувство, которое можно переживать, но объяснить нельзя. Объяснить можно понятие. While it cost little to make, Solaris will leave you with plenty to think about. Человеческий облик. Нет. Вы люди. Каждый по-своему. Number six, Soylent Green. Detective Thorn, 14th Precinct. In 2022, the world has become so overpopulated that people sleep in hallways, the air is hardly breathable, and basic food is considered a luxury. Beef. Oh my God. <laughs> New York's population of 40 million becomes short one, however, when a board member of the Soylent Corporation is murdered. He was murdered, you know. Assassinated. Enter Charlton Heston as a detective who discovers the murder is linked to a new food product called Soylent Green. Because of its enormous popularity, Soylent Green is in short supply. Remember, Tuesday is Soylent Green Day. The intriguing mystery all comes down to what Soylent Green is made of, which is every bit as disturbing as the ingredients for hot dogs. Forgive me, it's destroying me. What is The truth. Number five, Logan's Run. I'm Logan Five. Logan's Run was far from the first movie about a savior who discovers his utopian society is actually a dystopian society. By 1976, this was a pretty standard convention for most science fiction fair. Question. Do I get my four years back? What makes Logan's run memorable is that it doesn't take itself too seriously. Do you want me to take my clothes off? Not for your face. Instead, it's more of a fun, campy, fugitive-on-the-run movie that still provides solid thrills today. You don't run. You kill runners. You have always killed runners. Yes, I have. But now it's my turn, and I find I want to live. The film is also creditable for its retro sets and effects, which perfectly capture how the 1970s thought futurist cities and technology would look. You must be somewhere under the city. I'd always heard the city received its power from the sea, but this looks forgotten. Number four, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Bonsoir, Monsieur Benet. How nice to see you. Where the original invasion of the body snatchers was all about what the audience doesn't see, the 1978 remake puts more emphasis on what the audience does see. With a bigger budget and Philip Kaufman behind the camera, the thriller expands upon the original's universe to create a successful standalone picture. There's nothing to be afraid of. They were right. It's painless. Good. It never becomes consumed by new technology and visuals, however, staying true to the spirit of the 1956 film set. Jeffrey is not Jeffrey. With just the right mix of old and new, it's exactly what any good remake should be. <laughs> Number three, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. This is nuts. This landmark in director Steven Spielberg's career centers on Richard Dreyfuss as Roy Neary an ordinary man that encounters a UFO. Well, I guess you've noticed something that's a little strange with Dad. Being a film that's all about the universe's unsolved mysteries, Close Encounters leaves the audience with a million questions running through their minds. I just want to know that it's, it's really happening. Are these extraterrestrials lethal or peaceful? What are their intentions with Roy? How will the government react to these beings? She sent us four quavers, a group of five quavers, a group of four semi-quavers. Everything pays off in the final act, as the film answers the ultimate question mankind has pondered for centuries. Are we alone in the universe? Number 
two, Alien. Ash, can you see this? A creature breaks loose and terrorizes a group of people. <laughs> that setup is nothing new. I've never seen anything like it. The reason Alien remains one of the best movies of its kind, though, isn't because of the premise. Just a minute, just a minute. I mean, let's not be too hasty. We don't know anything about it. It isn't even because of the alien, although the little face hugger is pretty petrifying. You gonna get that off? Yeah. The film's sense of terror is derived from its setting, in the vast recesses of space, where no one can hear you scream. Shut up! Ridley Scott crafted the most suspenseful environment possible through ominous cinematography and claustrophobic sets, making every inch of his sci-fi horror flick crawl with dread. <laughs> <laughs> Before we beam up to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Fünf is English five. Schlacht is slaughter. Hof is house. Schlacht Hof fünf. Slaughterhouse five. How are you getting on? Have you found your feet yet? Well, not yet. Not, not really. Am I here to help you? Phoenix, this is inner control. Number one, Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. There'll be no one to stop us this time. Aside from its immortal characters, Han Solo, I'm Captain of the Millennium Falcon. Quotable dialogue. May the force be with you. Groundbreaking effects, creative action, alluring lore, heart-pounding musical score, and endless imagination. It's all a lot of simple tricks and nonsense. What is it that makes Star Wars so enduring? Perhaps it's because George Lucas managed to take elements of almost every iconic story in existence, from the legend of King Arthur to the films of Akira Kurosawa, and create something that was familiar yet one of a kind. The end product was not only a sci-fi triumph, but also a new iconic story that will stay with us until the end of time. Do you agree with our list? I find your lack of faith disturbing. What's your favorite sci-fi movie from the 1970s? <laughs> Jack! For more entertaining top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com.